Welcome to this Flame Guitars video. My name is David Kennett and you join me today in my South London workshop. Now what I have here today is a mid-60s Fender Jaguar. This guitar is actually owned by the guitarist Mark Refoy. Mark was uh, a guitarist in the band Spiritualized, then went on to found Slipstream and also worked as a guitarist for the Pet Shop Boys. And Mark has asked me to do a major overhaul and refurbishment of this guitar. Now one of the considerations when working on a guitar of this age is to what extent do we make changes on the guitar? How much originality do we keep? Or what do we change to make the guitar playable and maybe sort of breathe new life back into the guitar? And I'm well aware that people have strong views about, about this matter and, ex and the extent to which we do work on the guitar and where that line is, is to be drawn. I guess for me, the starting point is a discussion with the owner of the guitar, you know, what's important to them, you know, how much the originality and the character of the guitar do they want to keep, or maybe is that, that less important than making the guitar sort of properly playable again, because a number of these old guitars you know, have had a good life and you know, really aren't easy to play. So that, that I guess, is, is the starting point, and then it's a discussion about what do we keep, what, what do we change, to keep the character guitar but make it playable again. Now, fortunately, with regards to Mark's guitar, you know, those discussions really aren't quite so important. So much has changed about the, this, this guitar that we don't have to be too worried about making any sort of further changes to the guitar. But before I strip it down and start work on it, let's have a look at the guitar in a bit more detail. So starting with the the headstock and the decal, it's pretty obvious that the, the Jaguar is, is a later edition. I'm also pretty confident that that is a later edition as well. The fender, I can just I can just get my, my fingernail underneath and that start, starts to you know, lift off quite quite easily. I think for whatever reason the original decal has, has come off, been take, taken off uh, and, and that's been added later. So a new decal is going to go on there and that will be a period correct mid 60s decal for the Jaguar. So looking at the body there's quite a lot has gone on here over the years. For some reason at some point the uh, the pit guard and the pickup covers have been painted black and Mark would like the, the pickup covers to be taken back to white and I'm fairly certain that under this black is the original tortoiseshell pit guard so it'd be good to get, get that off without damaging the, the pit guard itself and, and take that back to the original hopefully a sort of tortoiseshell um, pit guard. Now to the, to the body and, and the paint finish. Now, now what we're looking at here is, is, not, is not sort of natural wear. If I show you the back. So what's happened here, uh, Mark tells me that originally this, when he got this guitar, it had a, a sunburst finish, but the paint was all lifting and, and peeling off. And so he sort, of, he sort of took it off. And my guess is that you know, what's left here now that this black paint is not the original mid-60s Fender finish. My guess is that it was at some point refinished, but not done well, not done properly, and the, the paint didn't adhere to the surface, and that's why it started to lift and peel. So what we've agreed to do is to dismantle the body, sand the body back, and refinish it in a three-color sunburst finish. In doing so, I'm going to have to sort of take out quite a few of these marks and dents that, that are here. Otherwise, if I put new finish over the top, that's just going to look, you know, that sort of fresh new finish look will just look all wrong with lots of sort of dents that'll just sort of show, show through below the, the new finish. So looking inside the control cavities, there's some evidence that this is the original mid-60s body. What we can see there is the the copper plate in the, in the base of the cavity that Fender were using to assist in the shielding of the guitar and you can see that there's a lead there that's connected to the, the copper plate and connected to the ground and the same for this, this cavity there maybe a bit harder to pick up again a, a copper plate in the base connected to ground and if we look in the, the upper cavity 
maybe a bit harder to pick up. Again, there's, there's a copper plate in there, again with a lead connected to the plate and connected to the ground. So there's some strong evidence that this is the, the original body from the mid 60s. So I'm now ready to refret this Jaguar, but there's one important consideration that I need to sort of think about first. When this guitar was made in the mid 60s, unusually Fender drove their frets in from the side. They were sort of pulled in. Uh, frets are almost universally now are driven in from the top, but Fender had this unusual technique of driving in from the side. And so the best way to take frets out with a fender of this age is to take them out the way they came in. If you take them out through the top of the board, there is the possibility of just chipping out bits of the, the fretboard as you, you do so, because the, the tang hasn't broken through the fretboard, through the wood, uh, when it was first inserted. However, uh, this is a bound neck, so to actually extract the frets the way they came in, I would have to first take off the, the binding. I don't really want to do that because then I'm gonna damage the finish and have to sort of touch that up. So on this guitar, I am going to take the frets out in a conventional manner and lift them out through the top. But in doing so, I'm just gonna take extra care and extra time, just, just take this, this job slowly, just to minimize and hopefully eliminating any chipping of this rosewood fretboard as I extract the, the frets. But let's, let's get on and see how we get on with this neck. So all the frets are out and I'm delighted with how that has gone. Not one bit of chipping, no chipping at all, which is absolutely excellent. 
yeah, that, that's gone really well. Just just checking the, the fretboard radius, this is a seven and a quarter radius fretboard, but it's it's fairly inconsistent up and down the fretboard. So I'm going to just give the fretboard a, a bit of a, a work over just to get a consistent seven and a quarter radius. However, I don't want to take out too, too much of this nice old wear that's in there. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a dressing and preparation before the, the frets are installed as, as possible, because it'd be nice to yeah, to keep some of this old wear here. However, in terms of getting the fretboard to play properly, this is one of the important parts, is, is getting consistent radius so, that, so when the frets are installed, I can then do as little fret leveling as possible. And the guitar will then play as well as it can. So, so I think we're now ready to move on with this, but that's, that's good. So the next step in this restoration is to remove and replace this decal. And it's quite clear this is not the original decal. This decal here is, is lifting off. It's, it's way, way thicker than the original decal would have been. And the lettering here is, is all wrong. So this is clearly something that's, that's happened later in the life of the guitar. So by comparison, this is a, a period correct decal, mid 60s decal, which I'm going to put in place. And you can see the, the lettering is all wrong. It's missing the body contour that just sits about, about there. So let's um, see if we can lift this off. This looks to me like this is gonna come off quite easily. Just softening the glue. Yeah, that, that's come off very easily. Yeah, yeah. The only only issue I need to consider now is that the lacquer colour around the decal has has just you know, it's gone darker, aged over over time. So where the new decal sits, it's not going to sit perfectly over that. Let's see if we can get, get this off as well. Yeah, so that's going to come off. That's going to come off okay as well. So I think once I've got this off, it's about you looking at the location of of that, so that I can cover as as much of this as possible in terms of the color difference between where the old decals were and where the new ones are going to be located. So I've just used some compound on this area just to smooth it out. And here it, it's nice and smooth, slightly different colour, but it's nice and smooth. Whereas here, less so. And I think the glue that has been used for the day colours applies here has just eaten into the surface a bit. I think it's going to be okay though. So this is the sort of proximate location of the decal. And these are applied by hand, so you'll see slight variations in the location of these, these decals. And if I just sort of push it across, maybe slightly further than I would normally apply it, I'm going to sort of largely cover the Jaguar lettering. Still a bit of a discolour, just just the the last R there. I think that's going to, that's going to be noticeable. So I think you know my consideration is is whether to. Uh, strip this and spray the top with the, the same colour, which. Again, it's something I don't want to do in the guitar of this age, so I think there's going to have to be a bit of a compromise here. Um, you know, it's, I think it's going to look fine. It's not going to be perfect, uh, but this this guitar was yeah, far from perfect when it came to me. Anyway, lots of 
lots of different compromises, lots of different bits of work have taken place in this, this guitar anyway. So it's going to be okay. And I always look for perfection, but this is not going to be perfect, but it's going to be, um, I think it, I'm going to have to sort of settle for good enough rather than perfection. The pick guard on this guitar have been sprayed black with nitrocellulose paint. And so I wanted to get, get that off, uh, but I was just a little concerned about how I might do that. The material you, that Fender were using in the 60s for their pick guards is called cellulose nitrate. So I think my, my concern was, was how the the nitrocellulose paint, whether it has sort of bonded into the, the surface of the pit guard, making it sort of difficult then to sort of separate the layers. And in addition to that, I was concerned about using quite an aggressive paint remover that might eat into the top surface of this pit guard. Certainly if I was to use something like acetone, that, that would eat into the, the surface quite quite quickly. So I've used a very mild paint remover, very gentle, and it's um, it's come off okay. And yeah, I'm pleased I've I've taken the, the time and effort to do that because there is something very attractive about these these old pit guards. Very different sort of look and texture and patina compared to a modern pit guard. And yeah, apart from looking at sort of a bit battered, as you expect for a guitar of this age, it has just has a very nice attractive sort of soft pattern about it. And uh, yeah, well worth the effort to, to get that paint off and so I can put this back on the guitar. I've now got the body back from the spray shop, so let's have a look at it. So as you can see, this is a three color sunburst finish, and it's been done in nitrocellulose to keep it authentic with original finish. And that looks very nice. I'm very happy with that. Nice, subtle shading between the, the three colors. And if you look at the back, Again, nice subtle shading going across the three colors. There's a couple of defects, one obvious one there and a less obvious one here, which again suggests to me that the, um, the original color would probably have been solid. I, I wonder whether Fender would have used this type of finish with these obvious defects. Uh, yeah, there's also some, if I look at the, the shape of the heel here, there's a suggestion to me that this part of the heel has been reworked. Again, the indications that this guitar has had a life, a history, some various changes being made along the way. But even so, this is going to look very nice. So now ready for the, the final assembly, put it all together, wire it up and do the setup. So the last stages of this job now. Well, this Jaguar is, is finished and it's looking really, really nice. 
and I hope that Mark Refoy, when he collects this next week, is going to be pleased with the work I've done on his guitar. So just to summarise the totality of the work I've done, I've replaced the headstock decal, an incorrect decal had been placed on there at some point in the past. I've refretted using uh, what you might describe as, as vintage fret wire, so two, two millimetres wide, one millimetre tall. Obviously the, the body has been resprayed in this very nice three colour sunburst and that's using a nitrocellulose finish. The pit guard had been sprayed black at some point in the past so that's been stripped off to expose this very nice tortoiseshell pit guard as had the, the pickup covers they had also been sprayed black. When I reassembled the guitar, I just checked that all the wiring was correct and the controls are working as they, they should in terms of like sort of mid 60s correct. Also just set up the, the trim lock, which I think a lot of Jaguar and Jazzmaster players sort of struggle to know, if you know quite how to set this up correctly. But all in all, this guitar is playing really, really nicely. Very easy to play, just feels nice, sounds great. Yeah, it's been a nice job. I've enjoyed refurbishing this, this guitar. So thanks for watching this Flame Guitars video. There's more videos to come from me at Flame Guitars. Please like and subscribe and all the usual things. Um, yeah, see you on, on the next video. Thank you for watching.